Hi, this is Libby Peters, your nurse educator for CVT, and today I'm here to talk with you about completing your 2017-2018 annual ongoing competency packet. Competency assessments being approached a little bit differently this year hospital-wide, and it's going to be more of an ongoing process as opposed to the previous um, treating it as a skills checklist and just a one and done kind of process. What we're going to be doing is trying to make it more meaningful and to help it to help make it something that's useful to you throughout your um, your year that we're uh, working on the competency. So what we have to start with is the competency packet itself and everyone will receive one of these. I will send them an email and also I will have some printed so that if you don't want to print it from your email you can pick one up from me or at the nurses station. And to start with this is the licensed competency packet for nurses only on CVT. There are two competencies included in the packet. Each competency is being approached with a three step process. You have part one, part two, part three for each one of the two competencies. There are certain things that are listed as required and they're noted with a capital R in bold letters before that step. There are things that are optional. It doesn't mean it's optional to not do any of them. Usually if there's optional activities you have to select one or two depending on the directions in your packet. Uh, of the optional activities, but it gives you choices as to how you want to complete that step. So you have um, things that you may like to do better than others. Some people like to do a CE Direct class. Others may be more into being creative and doing a bulletin board or a storyboard to put up in the break room. So there are options like that to complete step three. In starting with this first one, because it is an ongoing competency process where we're going to be doing it throughout the year ending with um, February 28th is when we're going to complete the process and these are going to start September 11th. Uh, the first one for CVT is going to be on nurse responsiveness and it's going to be measured by the press gainy questions that are included on the surveys the patients get and the first one reads during the hospital stay after you press the call button how often did you get help as soon as you wanted it? And then the second question reads, how often did you get help in getting to the bathroom or in using the bedpan as soon as you wanted? We're going to take the initial measurement from August 2017 and we're going to compare it to the final measurement which will be uh, in February 2018. So uh, step one of the competency process is you're going to complete, it's required, uh, the CE Direct course called No Way Around It. Rounding means satisfied patients and nurses and it's course CE711 and it's due to be completed by October 31st, 2017. Part two is attend one of the scheduled focus groups and participate in the discussion on responsiveness and empathy being held during the months of November and December. The schedule will be posted and in those discussion groups they're going to be kind of fun. We're going to have some role playing. We're going to watch an empathy video. We're going to have uh, some opportunities for open discussion about how we can uh, make a movement in the scores for our, these uh, press gainy things, but more importantly, how we can impact the patient outcomes uh, and how we can make our patients feel more satisfied with their stay here and more um, happy with what's happening as far as their care. Uh, you guys do an awesome job. Your patient satisfaction scores are awesome on many, many, many uh, facets of the survey. So don't think that in any way this is a result of a deficiency in something that you're doing. It's not. It's just that with anything we always have one area where we can make a, uh, a move from a good number maybe to the best number. And so that's what we're going to try to do with this. We're going to try to move our good number and move it to where it could be better or even the best number available in BayCare or throughout the Press Gainey system. Um, part three is complete one of one, just one of the optional activities below. And you can see on part three that there are three activities, but you only have to do one, but you get to pick. So the first one is complete a patient safety nurse responsiveness crossword puzzle. 
Those are going to be handed out in the focus group meetings. So you would leave your focus group with what you need to complete part three. Or, if you don't like that idea, you can provide copies of two patient compliment cards received during this evaluation year that detail how you contributed to a positive patient experience. It needs to be more than just like, um, hi, um, I really appreciated the care I received and Libby did a great job. It needs to give a little detail about, you know, uh, Libby went and got extra blankets for me and my family or some kind of little uh, expounding on it. So, but uh, the other option in that area is write an exemplar. Some people don't like to do exemplars because that word is kind of foreign to us. It's not something we use in common everyday language, but basically it is just a story that can be a paragraph or two of how we impacted a positive patient experience for somebody. And you're going to give some details on how you made that happen by using the five P's of patient rounding, um, any kind of patient satisfaction that you did that uh, activities that you engaged in. And you're going to detail those for a memorable patient, but don't put any identifying information in your exemplar. No patient names, no FIN numbers. We just want you to explain how you help that patient with your uh, rounding that you were doing. That activity, the last activity on the first competency, needs to be completed by February 28, 2018. On the next page of your packet, you have the competency number two, and it's going to be on pa positive patient ID using the specimen collection process. Part one, there are required activities there. There's three required activities in part one. You're going to complete the uh, self-confidence assessment survey, and it's a pre-learning activity tool. It's going to be attached to your packet. It looks like this. And you're going to turn that into the educator by September 30th, 2017. So that's this month. So we'll need to get moving on that as quickly as possible. And it's just an opinion survey on how comfortable you feel in using the Zebra wireless printers and the specimen collection icon process because we do have some fallouts where um, the signing of the process is not happening and the lab is reporting that up the uh, chain to their reporting bodies that they that governs them that we're not signing our specimens. So we're going to work on that process. So then you're going to review the PowerPoint and complete the crossword puzzle and it's going to be emailed out to you titled Zebra Wireless Specimen Collection and turn in the puzzle by October 30th, 2017. The third thing you have to do is watch a YouTube video titled Pre-Analytical Errors, Real People, Real Suffering. List three complications people suffered in the video as a result of a pre-analytical error. A pre-analytical error means the blood draw process or the specimen collection process. That there were errors in either patient identification or possibly in the order of the draw or um, mislabeling. Um, different ways that different things can happen and it explains that in the video. And you're going to list three of those on your sheet. And you can see right here underneath the purple uh, letters that there's spaces on your competency sheet here for you to fill those in. So that's all part one of this competency. It's a big part one, but some of that's, you know, some of it is more easily done than others, but there are three steps just in part one. Part two, we're going to attend a live demonstration of documentation process for specimen collection using the specimen collection icon in November and December 2017 dates to be posted, those will probably be held in the computer lab because we'll have to be in the train domain to use that process. And uh, I'm working on scheduling those now and those dates will be posted. Part three is complete the post-learning activity self-confidence assessment survey. Looks just like the pre-confidence pre-learning activity, but it says post on it. It'll be included in your packet. So that's a required activity in part three. And then you go down to selecting one of the optional activities. So you only have to do one of the optional activities in Part 3. And that includes the CE Direct course, Preventing Medical Errors for Nurses, and it's course number 60033. I want to point out there's a bonus involved in that because this course also applies towards your renewal for your license. So if you choose to do this, I wanted to find a way that you could maybe get double benefit out of the first the learning activity, but then also you've got the um, 
added benefit of completing one of your license requirements too. The second optional, if you don't like that idea, is you can create a poster board about the BayCare specimen collection process, place it in the break room, discuss your poster with your coworkers, and have at least 15 people sign a roster that they reviewed it. And that would be very good, for, especially for our creative folks if they want to work on that. And also we have a uh, third choice in the optional activities, and it's complete the CE Direct webinar titled Interoperability, a Plan for the Future, and it's course WEB 305. After you finish all that, you're going to sign your packet on the last page down at the bottom where it says employee signature and date. You'll turn your packet in with any supporting documentation that you've collected throughout the year. So you want to keep this in a folder somewhere we can keep everything together. You'll turn it into me and then I'll turn it into your manager. If you have any questions about the process, don't hesitate to let me know. You can email me or call me and we'll get together <coughs> Excuse me, and discuss how we can remove any barriers. I think that's it. I have to get a drink. Excuse me. And that's um, pretty much the instructions for that, but if you need anything, just let me know. Thanks.